there's one thing we know is going to happen in 2025, it is that utility companies will continue to do everything that they can to kill rooftop solar. And in this video, I'm going to explain why this is happening and what you need to look out for with these utilities if you're considering an investment into solar for your home. Now, why is it that utility companies want to kill rooftop solar? Well, the fact of the matter is, every time somebody goes solar on their power grid, they lose a lot of money. And they lose a lot of money for three reasons. The first reason is that they no longer have a lifelong customer to sell power to. If a customer is on average paying $200 a month for electricity and the utility company raises rates by 5% annually without the customer noticing, over a 25 year period, that single household will generate just under $115,000 in revenue for the utility company. So. That's the first reason. The second reason is that in many cases, utilities have to upgrade their grid infrastructure to account for the added solar system. This means new transformers, new smart meters, and sometimes new transmission and distribution lines. Lastly, as more people go solar, the cost to maintain the grid often shifts to non-solar customers. And this pushes even more people to go solar, which only makes things worse for the utility. So in all, homeowners going solar is not something that they want. But why is it in the first place that a person who's gone solar has to remain connected to the power grid? Well, the goal for homeowners with solar is to produce as much electricity over a year as they were previously buying from the utility company. So if you were buying 10,000 kilowatt hours a year from your power company, you would want enough panels on your home to produce 10,000 kilowatt hours annually in order so that you do not have another power bill again. But there's an issue with this. Solar panels only produce power during the day. So how are the solar panels gonna generate electricity to cover the bill at nighttime when the sun has gone down? This is a really good question. And back in the early days of solar installations, the utility companies actually provided the solution. If a house had solar panels on the roof and during the day the panels were producing more power than what the house was using, that excess power could simply be pushed back onto the power grid and then sold to other homes in the area. And since the utility company wasn't the one generating the electricity, they would give the solar homeowner a credit for the excess power produced. And then that credit could be used to pay off their nighttime electricity bill. So as an easy example, if a household used 50 kilowatt hours throughout the day, 30 during the daytime, and then 20 at night, and their solar panels produced 60 kilowatt hours in the afternoon, 30 of those kilowatt hours would be used immediately by the house, during the daytime, and then the other 30 could be sent back to the grid and then turned into a credit to cover their nighttime bill. And this program works great, only up until the point which too many households are using it. To put it simply, once too many people go solar on their grid, utility companies no longer value the solar export as much as they used to. And that's not because they're mean or they don't like you. The reason is the abundance of supply. And markets that become mature, meaning places where a large number of homeowners go solar, rooftop solar is not hard to find. Because during the day, these areas have a massive supply of incoming solar generation, but a relatively low demand for it. And as a result, the value is lower. You see, utility companies are always performing this balancing act between energy generation and demand. And unlike conventional power plants, solar and wind resources can't be fully dispatched at will to meet real-time demand unless there's a battery system. To give a little more context, perhaps you've heard of the duck curve. A duck curve is essentially a line graph that tracks daily net energy load from the grid, and it gets its name because it looks like a duck. The example shown on the screen is for California in the springtime since 2015. However, in many solar dense markets, it's gonna look quite similar to this. You can see the tail of the duck represents early morning energy demand, which is fairly consistent and sees a small spike in the AM when people are getting ready for work. Then once the sun comes out, California's massive army of solar panels kick into gear, creating the extremely deep belly of the duck. This influx of solar generation significantly reduces the net energy load for the utility. Keep in mind, the middle of the day is typically a period of lower demand anyway, but once the early evening rolls around, there's a huge spike in net energy demand due to two factors. One, solar power begins to taper off, and two, homeowners are getting home from work. This chart shows that the belly has gotten significantly deeper since 2015 thanks to the solar boom. However, the tail and the head of the duck, which represent the non-solar hours, haven't seen as large of a reduction. So to summarize, because of this balancing act between energy demand and energy generation in solar mature areas, solar exports have simply become less valuable to the utilities. And that is why eventually with all places that are adopting solar quickly, the early adopters who are able to get grandfathered into one-to-one -one net metering benefit, but eventually the market matures and the utility company can no longer offer new solar customers the same program. This happened first in the state of Hawaii who had to end net metering in 2015. Nevada had to do the same shortly afterwards. and most recently, the state of California had to end one-to-one -one net metering in the spring of 2023. Now, if you live in a state which has not fully matured yet and still offers one-to-one -one net metering, so 
places like Florida or Texas, you should absolutely appreciate it. It's becoming a thing of the past. And if your utility company still offers it and you have not gone solar yet, I would highly, highly suggest that you at least revisit the idea in order to get grandfathered into the one-to-one -one program. Because very shortly, possibly here in 2025, things could change for those markets as they mature and that the investment simply may no longer make sense. And if you live in one of those states and need any help going through that process, reach out to me, book a call, and we could discuss options for your home. But what does this all mean for the future of residential solar or for homeowners who may not have one for one net metering today, considering that more and more utility companies are moving away from it. Well, the solution is going to be battery storage. You see, the issues come back to the fact that on average, solar panels can only provide electricity for homes during the five to six peak sunlight hours of the day. And given the fact that during those hours, the systems are producing more electricity than what the house is consuming, the electricity needs to go somewhere. And to play devil's advocate, I completely understand why at a certain point, the utility companies have to end their net metering programs. They simply cannot utilize all of the early afternoon solar production. And the more people that go solar on their grid, the more that they have to raise the rates for non-solar homeowners on that grid. Now, for a long time, people never thought that battery storage could be the solution to this issue simply due to the costs. But really over the past few years specifically, battery storage prices have dropped significantly, making it a viable option for solving the net metering issue. Solar manufacturing companies saw the trend of less utility companies across the country offering net metering to homeowners. And so they decided to create low cost battery storage systems. So instead of in the afternoon, homeowners sending their energy back to the power grid, they have that excess power go towards filling up the battery. And then after the sunset, when the solar stops producing, the home automatically switches to battery power. This is now the reality for all homeowners who are connected to the public utilities in California, Hawaii and other parts of the country. Of course, there's still an added cost for these battery systems. And so while previously in parts of California could expect a six to eight year payback period for solar, now it's gonna be more like 10 to 12 years. There is one particular innovation in the industry that I'm extremely excited about. And I have been proposing to many homeowners in these areas that don't have net metering. And that is the self-consumption battery. Many battery manufacturers over the past couple of years have learned that the use case for batteries for many people has become less about battery power during outages and more about creating an energy storage system for daily use. So storing the excess solar power during the day and then using it to power the home at night or during the non-solar production hours. There are many parts of the country, such as the Bay Area and Southern California, which rarely experience outages. And so what battery manufacturers have been able to do is innovate a lower cost battery, which are not necessarily designed to provide backup power, but instead act as a solution to the net metering issue. This involves them removing some components of the battery system, which allow for the systems to operate in grid down scenarios, such as the system controller and the automatic transfer switch. But for many people, that is not their priority and they can save upwards of $5,000 on the battery systems by not having those components installed. The two main batteries, which you'll hear about that can offer this configuration will be the Enphase 5P and the Solar Edge Energy Bank, which are both great products, which I've each sold. Now, if you think it's redundant to invest into a battery system, which does not provide power to the home during outages, you can certainly include the system controller. But if you live in a place which does not have one-to-one -one net metering and outages are rare, I would at least encourage you to look at a proposal for each of the options just to compare them head to head. On a positive note for people who do invest into battery storage systems with backup, there is one incentive program which is becoming increasingly popular all over the country, and that is called a virtual power plant program. Now, for those of you not already aware, while utility companies have benefited massively from the trend of home electrification, one issue that all utility providers have recently dealt with across the board has been grid stabilization, especially during summer months in the mid afternoon when everybody is firing up their ACs and charging their electric vehicles at home. It's increasingly common for local utility grids to become overloaded, causing them to have to fire up peaker plants or in worst case scenarios, resort to rolling blackouts. In such cases, they may literally shut off power to entire zip codes to prevent the entire grid from collapsing. So to combat this over the past couple of years in states like California and other parts of the country, utility companies have begun to offer homeowners who have grid connected deep cycle batteries, the option to participate in what are called virtual power plant programs. In these programs during peak demand days, the utility company can in a sense, take control of your battery and then discharge the stored energy that you have available to other parts of the grid where needed. Now they understand just like you that this stored power is valuable. So during these peak hours in some areas, they'll pay you a very good rate of between two and $3 per kilowatt hour that they discharge from your battery. This is great for homeowners who may decide to travel during the summer months or 
homeowners using solar panels to power their homes during these times while having their battery prepared for outages throughout the year. And over time, you can really reduce your financial burden by utilizing a program like this. The best virtual power plant program that I'm aware of is available to Massachusetts homeowners, and it's called Connected Solutions. And if homeowners participate in energy sharing during the four summer months of the year, they can expect to receive on average $1,500 per battery per year. Now, almost all batteries today have the necessary software to participate in a virtual power plant program. So whether you're interested in the Tesla Powerwall, the Enphase 5Ps, or the Franklin Whole Home Battery, all of these batteries will allow you to utilize this function as long as your utility company has a program available. Now, this video will give you an idea for where trends are going for residential solar with the utilities. But if you're in the process of shopping for solar, you also really need to make sure that you understand the common regrets that people have after purchasing solar for your home. So make sure you check out my video going over the five things that homeowners regret after buying solar for their home, which will pop up on the screen now. But as always, thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll see y'all next time.